Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm a little bit late. I had a little bit of trouble getting a signal today, so I think we're going to be okay. So if I disappear, that's why. All right. But thank you for joining me. This is Lunch with Laura. Happy Labor Day. I hope you guys are having so much fun. Um, today, we're going to be talking about three ways to manage your stress during and after divorce. Now, you're going to notice I look a little different today, right? <laughs> like, what happened? You didn't look like that last week. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to do this video. Um, I've been dealing with stress. You know, I've, I've been divorced two years now. And I'm in the period where I'm kind of reinventing myself. And it's really actually a good time to do that. You know, when you're going through or after a divorce, you know, we have a major life change. When you're already reevaluating everything in your life, it's a good idea to now just go ahead and start to think about, you know, what you want to do with it, start a business or... Um, how you want to revamp your look, whatever it is, um, you know, now is a good time to do that, um, career-wise and personal, uh, in, in your personal life. So, um, I'm just going to be real candid today. Um, you know, today's probably going to be a shorter video because it's the holiday, but I'm just going to be real candid today and just tell you that, you know, I've been dealing with stress, and that's one of the reasons why I had to dye my hair this color and cut it shorter. Um, I have been, um, well, some of it is physical and a lot of it is mental. Um, I've just been, you know, just trying to get this business up and running. It's just been a lot of stress <laughs> and it's been other things too that have, that have played into it. But this is the, the major piece of it is really just, um, trying to hone in my business and just all, all that stuff that goes along with that. Okay. And so what started happening was this spring, my hair really started shedding and shedding just from the stress. And then I noticed, too, a, a few months ago, I was called by Carter Blood Care because I usually donate blood fairly regularly. And I went to go there, and my iron kept, you know, my iron was low and low and low. I couldn't donate. And then I um, researched that one of the things that can also make your hair shed or make your hair fall out is low iron or, you know, kind of all, almost being anemic. And so I started to, to take... Um, some iron pills and I also I'm, I'm not really a, a red meat eater but I had to start incorporating red meat into my diet because the iron pills just weren't enough I mean I was taking the iron pills for like a month and I went back to try to donate and my iron was still too low it was pretty much at the same level as it was before I started taking the pills I'm like what anyway so um, so part of it was you know stress some of it also is dietary was going on internally with me not just emotions but also kind of physically there was some my iron was off and so I started taking some more supplements I started taking some um, collagen and keratin and also some biotin lots of tins right <laughs> um, so those things you know I, I'm um, just recommending to you you know you start to research and look into those things and think, see if those things are right for you um, I also went obviously this past weekend to go ahead and, and go to my stylist and ask her, you know, what's, you know, what else can I do to, you know, help my hair get back to where it's supposed to be? Because a lot of times, too, if it's an iron thing, um, you know, a lot of times just when you correct that, usually it takes about, excuse me, usually it takes about two months for it to really start to filter into your system. But still, even after a month, you should start to see a difference. Um, you know, it's, it, it, you should start to see your hair getting better. I mean, I, I, I even start to see my eyebrows and my eyelashes getting thinner. I mean, that's, that's how I knew a lot of it was internal and what's going on. It wasn't just, you know, oh, I need to change my shampoo. No, I, I did do that too, um, to a plant-based shampoo um, that's better for your hair, a more kind of an organic type of shampoo. Um, so so I'm, I'm bringing you this video today just to let you know, yeah, this is something that I'm also struggling with. And that it changed, I had to change my appearance. I couldn't dye my hair. I think another thing that was bad too was I had the red dye in my hair. And I think that really didn't agree with my hair. If I'm going to lighten it, I have to stay in the blonde family and not the red family. So anyway, again, you know, we're kind of learning as we get older. And we have to make adjustments as we're aging. And so, you know, this is one of these times where I have to make this adjustment. Um, because my body's changing, my hair is changing, and I'm getting older. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's how you deal with it. And so let's, let's get into that and talking about stress. And here are the three things that you can do to help manage stress, especially when you're going through a life change, like a breakup or um, a divorce or even after a divorce. It's kind of dealing with 
the new normal and how you're going to kind of lay out the landscape of your life, right? The first thing, um, I'm just going to give you my suggestions. The first thing is anchor your hope and trust in God. I mean, you may not believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob like I do. You may believe in, you know, another entity. That's fine. Um, I respect that. But for me, I have to believe that I can rely on my heavenly Papa who is, you know, all-powerful, who is master and maker of the universe, and who knows, you know, the end from the beginning. And he has the power to give me wisdom and guidance and revelation because I know I can't do it in my own strength and in my own understanding. I know I can't. And so I know that I can tap into his heavenly plan and get the download, the strategy, and the wisdom that I need to move forward. I have to have reliance and confidence in him because otherwise, for me, I feel hopeless. I feel like there's no way I'm going to make it. And so um, I just encourage you, you know, even if you, you know, haven't really been plugged into the Lord in this season of your life or it's been a while since you've really had um, just a kind of one-on-one -on -one time with God, that's really the only way that I know that I can continue putting one foot in front of the other. Um, that's one major way that I deal with stress, just plugging into God, knowing who He is, knowing that he hung all the stars and called them by name. Trillions and trillions of stars, he just, they hang by the word of his power. Ugh. Whenever I try to wrap my brain around that, I say, God, it's too lofty for me. I can't, I can't grasp that. It's, it's too much for me. All right, so anchor your hope in God. The second thing is make your physical health a high priority. Taking care of you, again, like me, while I was just saying a minute ago, taking the supplements that you need. Going to see a stylist, you know, if, you, if it's a hair issue or skin issue. Sometimes when people are under stress, they break out. Um, if they're already having, say, skin issues, like they have, they have eczema or psoriasis, stress will um, accentuate that and make it worse. It will magnify it. And so, you know, whatever it is, even, even a lack of sleep, sometimes stress can also affect your sleep. And so I would just make that a high priority. Get as much rest as you possibly can. Um, that's when you that's the time when your body is healing, it's rejuvenating, um, it's being refreshed for the following day. It's where you get your energy. Um, you know, so I had to switch around and try to eliminate, you know, as many things that weren't absolutely necessary. Um, you know, I'm still working a lot of hours, but I'm trying to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I'm just making my business a priority in my life right now. And, um, you know, I'm eating better. I also recognize that. A lot of times, I, the stuff I was, the stuff that was eating was not necessarily bad. A lot of times, I just pop a cheese stick, you know, it stick, uh, cheese string rather, in my mouth and eat that, or I would eat fruit. But I wasn't eating enough vegetables. I wasn't eating enough of a balanced diet, um, and that's another thing that was kind of throwing me off. I, mean, I was eating a lot of salads, but a lot of times, depending even on what type of salad that you're eating, it, a lot of times it doesn't have a whole lot of nutritional value. It helps you to fill you up. Um, so that way you don't overeat and it helps you to lose weight. But it's not necessarily great for nutrition. You really have to diversify and really incorporate lots of different vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables, into your diets, which is also going to help my hair, especially spinach. And I have to be careful with spinach because spinach has a lot of vitamin A in it. And I know one time that I was, I was eating too much spinach and that also affected my hair. So, I, you know, balance with everything, right? The third thing, okay, get good people around you. Um, and if you feel like you don't have any of those right now, get you some. <laughs> you know, they exist on the earth. Ask God to show you, to give you divine appointments, to bring people into your life who are going to speak life, words of life, words of wisdom, words of encouragement. Um, get that support system around you. It's so important. Um, and, you know, it, they are at church. They are um, some, of the, some of your friends of your friends. Um, they may be people that God, you know, has you run into when you go into Tom Thumb grocery store today. You know, whatever it is, you know, those are the people who are really cheering you on. Those are the people who are um, just encouraging you. And thank God I have a network of wonderful, godly women that I can call up and say, hey, I'm having a hard time today. And I have even a few people I can call up in the middle of the night and be like, talk to me talk to me because I am struggling. 
um, you know, get one or two people in your life like that, you know, and, and you'll be surprised how that will really help to carry you through, even if they don't have the right answers. I'm not necessarily even looking for them to have the right answers. I'm just looking for them just to love on me and to encourage me and say that, you know, I'm worth it and I can do it. It's not necessarily I'm looking for, you know, one, two, three answer. That's okay. That's okay. That's what God is for, right? <laughs> but that's okay. But a lot of times it's just someone you can just reach out to and just say, just, just talk to me, love me, tell me everything's going to be okay. And, um, you know, just do those three things. Let me just recap real quick. Anchor your hope and trust in God is number one. Number two is make your physical health a priority. And number three, get good people around you. That's really the best way to manage stress. So I'll keep you guys updated on my hair. And of course, also, too, you'll be able to see from the videos how my hair is doing, right? <laughs> but it's just a physical manifestation of what's going on and how stress can negatively affect you. And I'm not, you know, I'm just like you guys. <laughs> and, you know, stress, you know, I, I try to be as positive as I can be. Anybody who's on my Facebook page know I'm all about positivity. And that also helps with managing stress, too. Even just operating in the opposite spirit when you don't feel like it. And everything surrounding you just says, oh, you can't make it. You're not going to make it. You know, it's everything's terrible. Everything, you know, everything's going into the toilet. Whatever, whatever. I'm reading my Bible. I'm keeping my words in agreement with heaven, even when I don't feel like it. It's the most important time to do that. So I hope you guys are having a fabulous Labor Day. I hope you guys are eating some ribs and some potato salad and some coleslaw and all that good stuff. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be eating today, but I think I'm just going to go back and unfortunately I need to do some work today. So enjoy. Have a wonderful holiday. Be careful if you're traveling and going on the roads and take care. I'll see you tomorrow.